Hello students and parents. Namaskar. Welcome to Career 360. Today we are going to explore the 10 big measures or proposals that are made by the finance minister in the budget that was presented in the parliament today. And all these 10 things are to do with only education so that you people understand how it impacts you, your families, your students, your children and how it impacts the future of the country. Let me take you through all the 10 points step by step. The first thing is the budget allocation itself. How much of the money by the government of India is allocated to the budget, right? Now, if you look at the budget at, at the current point, that for the school education alone, this year, they allotted 78,572 crores. This was last year, 67,571 crores in the revised estimates. But when you look at it from the actuals of 23-24, which is two years back, remember this budget is for the year 25-26, right? The actual expenditure in 23-24 was 67,972 crores. When you look at that, so two years back when you compare it, because revised estimates you cannot compare, it's still in the works and it might still change a bit, right? But then look at it with the actual spend that happened in 23-24, which is two years back, the growth is 16%, which essentially means that we're dealing with a 7.6% CIGR growth over the last two years. 7 7.6%, 7 which more or less is slightly more incremental to the inflation rate that you have in the country. Now, how does the higher education go? This is where the concern is. This is where the concern is because if you look at the higher education in the current year, the budget is 50,078 crores. 50,078 crores. And the last year's revised estimate was 46,842. But as I told you, this is incomplete. The figures might change as you move along. If you look at it two years back, the actual spend was 55,393 crores. So, in 23-24, we actually spent 55,393 crores on higher education. This year, the allocation is 50,078 crores. This, from the revised estimate, is 7.7% jump. But actually, if you look at it two years back, there is a fall of 10% in the overall budget for higher education in the country. And this should be concerning some of us. Now, let's go to the other big proposals. The first part, I talked of the budget and the allocations of budget, right? The second thing that they did was, they, and this is very good news for students, but you need to look at it in terms of how much is the impact in terms of the number of seats. The minister declared that, of course, there are 1.35 lakh students in, in IITs at this point in time. This 1.35 lakh students, remember, are not just the students who are pursuing B.Tech, but also B.Sc, M.Tech and M.B.A. and all those things. Any course that you have in the IITs. At this point in time, across the 23 IITs, there are about 1.35 lakh students studying which is the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, or anything that you have. Because the number of seats that you have in IITs at this point of a B.Tech, which go through JE Main and JE Advanced, is about 17,500 students, right? Now, the minister proposed that they'll increase in, in, in the number of students by 6,500. And this 6,500 can be across B.Tech, M.Tech, B.Sc, or M.B.A. And across all the years, one doesn't know, there has to be greater clarity about that. But, what she said is that across the five IITs that were started recently, the total intake capacity will increase by about six and a half thousand. And that is still good enough because we are expanding the capacity immediately, right? And it also said that hostel and other infra capacity at IIT Patna will also be expanded. So there is a special focus on Bihar if you notice that and that comes up across here also here very clearly. Now, this is the number of seats which we are talking about, right? And if you look at this, you actually had about 7,740 as a total intake in the current in the 24 year, which is for the BTEC, all the seats, 23 uh, IITs that you have. So this 70,000, how much will it expand when you, because you have to divide 6,500 and apportion that across BTEC, BSc, MBA, MTech. One doesn't know those details because it's only across five IITs. We just need to get to it. But my opinion, you will be dealing with a between 1,000 and 1,200 kind of an increase in BTEC seats in the coming year. Then the third thing that they have done, the PM Research Fellowship, this is very important for India because India needs to invest in research, right? So in the, and the budget says in the next five years, first of all, it's the next five years, under the PM Research Fellowship scheme, we will provide 10,000, 10,000 new fellowships, right? For the technological research in IITs and IISC. So this 10,000 new fellowships are limited to 
IITs and IICs. This will definitely, definitely improve the kind of research that happens in these institutions and this is very good for the country also. The fourth thing that you have is the medical education. The number of seats in MBBS and, and all those things are expanding dramatically. Of course, in the, in the past uh, years, we've expanded in the last 10 years, we've seen a dramatic expansion. And we are currently have about 1.1 lakh, uh, you know, UG and PG, PG seats. This, the government now says that they'll expand immediately about 10,000 seats, 10,000 additional seats. And over the next five years, towards the goal of 75,000 seats in the next five years. So 75,000 seats in the next five years. The important thing that we need to understand is of this, how many are in private sector? And how many are in public sector? And the reason this is important is the private sector is unaffordable. You know, with the fees of one, one and a half crore rupees that you have, it is unaffordable. And 98% people, students can't even think of that. Right. So I am just hoping of the 10,000 and of the total 75,000 seats that you have, a bulk of it is actually the investment by the government, the state governments or the government of India. So that the expansion of capacity, which all Indians can actually lay access to based on merit, of course. Otherwise, if it's all handed over to private, it will be a question mark in terms of the proposal itself. So that is the thing. But the simple thing is that you have 10,000 more seats next year. And that is a very good news for the students who are looking to pursue MBBS in India. Then the next one. By the way, this is the total MBBS seats that you have in the country. Right. In UG, you actually have 1,8,000. In PG, you have about 54,834. And it's been expanding dramatically over the last many years. And that's a reflection in the, in the way it happens, right? Now the fifth point, the Saksham Angamadi and Potion 2.0 scheme. This is very, very good, right? I actually really like this because it actually impacts people at the grassroots level, which is what we as India must be working on. It's this Saksham Angamadi and uh, Potion scheme provides nutritional supports to more than 8 crore children across the midday meal schemes and everything, it provides support to eight crore children, besides pregnant women, lactating mothers and so on and so forth. The cost and what they're now talking about is and about 20 lakh adults and girls in aspirational districts and the Northeast region. The cost norms for the nutritional support will be enhanced. So what is being supported to these eight crore children across the, across the country, the norms would be enhanced, the budget would be enhanced so there is better nutritional support for these children. And this is very, very good. It's extremely important for a country like India to ensure that the, we actually have healthy children who can contribute to the demographic dividend. And this is extremely, extremely good. Then you have the sixth one, which is broadband connectivity. Recently, a DICE report came in. We said 50% of schools in India don't have connectivity or computers, right? Now here, they're taking that up very, very closely. What it says is it covers all the broadband connectivity will be provide, provided to all government secondary schools, all government secondary schools and primary health centers in rural areas under the Bharat Net project. So the government of India has runs a project called the Bharat Net project. Through the Bharat Net project, they'll ensure that they'll provide to all government secondary schools and primary health centers. So this will improve here. And once this connectivity is created, then many of the exams that you have, which are computer-based tests and all, you will have greater competition. That's very important because at this point in time, with 50% of the schools excluded from the connectivity, the entrance examination is limited to the 50% who actually have connectivity. The seventh point you have is the Atal Tinkering Labs. You know, it's very important for the government of India and we as a country to develop scientific temper and among all the young minds that we have, right? So, the government of India now says that 50,000 adult tinkering labs will be set up in government schools in the next five years. So over the next five years, you have 50,000 government schools getting benefited by establishment of an adult tinkering lab in their school. This is very good because it actually improves the spirit of curiosity, innovation and fosters a scientific temper among students. And this is very important for the country. Then you have the Bharati Bhasha Pustak. Now, this is for regional languages and vernacular languages that we have in the country. There's always been a question mark on how the state governments actually teach students in local language, but many of the exams are always held in English language, right? So, what the government and the kind of learning that happens in these things, right? So, here, what they're doing is we propose to implement a Bharatiya Bhasha Pustak scheme to provide digital form Indian languages books for school and higher education. This aims to help students understand 
their subjects better. So it might be in English, but they'll also give it in regional language so that the students have a better understanding of that because they understand that language slightly better. The ninth thing is the National Center for Excellence for Skilling. This is very important. And here, what we're talking about is building on the initiative announcement in the July budget. Five national centers for excellence for skilling will be set up with global expertise and partnership. Now, what essentially we're talking of is to, we are basically partnering with international organizations to create skilling courseworks, which includes curriculum design, training, and trainers, a skill certification framework, and periodic reviews. So, what we're talking of is actually setting up national centers for excellence uh, of excellence for skilling only. So we were earlier talking of you know, National Center for Excellence for research uh, purposes. Now we're talking of skilling purposes also, which will actually create employability for the students because they'll actually gain a skill to get employment. And that is very important. And the last and most important thing, uh, you know, for students who are wanting to study abroad. This is very important for students who are wanting to study abroad. As you know, a couple of years back, there was a scheme that was launched, which is called TCS, which is actually tax assurance. Right here, even if you're remitting money to the your own children, uh, your there was a TCS that was demanded, and that was ranged from 0.5% to 5%, depending on who pays and how they pay. So now, what they've done is two things: the threshold of collection and tax at source TCS on remittances under the RBS liber, uh, LR scheme is proposed to be increased from seven lakhs to ten lakhs. This is the first part of it, but this is much smaller than what you are about to read now. I also propose to remove TCS on remittances for education purposes. Propose to remove TCS on remittances for education purposes, where such remittance is out of a loan taken from a specified financial institution. So there are two things that are, that we must remember here. If you uh, you know want TCS to be uh, not being paid, you must take a loan from a, a specified financial institution. Specified. This is very important. If you're paying it by yourself, there is still TCS. If you're paying it through a loan taken from a non-specified financial institution, there is still a TCS. So in a sense, it is encouraging you know, people, individuals to take a loan from a specified financial institution, which I don't know is a question mark because I might want to pay out of my savings. But it encourages people to you know, take a loan from a specified financial institution. And there, in that case, there is no TCS involved at all. So these are the top 10 proposals that we have. There are a few other things also, of course, you know that salary, there's a rejig in terms of personal income tax because of which there is more disposable power in the hands of the people, parents and, and, and so on and so forth. But for education sector, these are the top 10 proposals that you have from, which are declared by the government of India. And we thought we must bring it down to you. Thank you so much. I just hope you like this video. If you want any clarifications on the budget, we'll be covering it over the next two, two days in terms of the details of this budget. And please keep watching them. Thank you so much. Namaskar.